Hello students, this video is about the fourth lesson in unit one entitled addition and subtraction postulate. These postulates are really just one postulate masquerading as two. The idea is that the parts of an entire diagram add up to the measure of the entire diagram, whether it's a segment, an angle, or what have you. And secondarily, if we take out one piece of an entire diagram, the piece that's left over is equal to the difference between those two pieces. If that made sense to you, great. If not, I'm going to walk you through some of the notes and try and make sure that you understand. First, let's take a look at the learning target. Today, we're going to be identifying the relationship between angles and segments and using that relationship to combine them. E and notice it says combine, either add or subtract is what we're talking about here. Uh, for the do now, it gives us these two endpoints. It asks us to graph both points and find the midpoint of AC and label the point M and then secondarily find the length of AC. Uh, pause the video, try this one out by yourselves and then come back to see if you got it right. All right, we have the graph of AC, line segment AC here. We found the midpoint, the middle of AC, and we labeled it point M because that's what it asked us to do. Uh, the coordinates of M are 4, 2.5. We found that just by counting boxes, there are seven boxes here. So three and a half boxes from A and three and a half boxes from C uh, is going to give us M. There's a sophisticated formula for this that you're going to be learning about in lesson six. Also, to find the length of AC, we simply count the boxes. We don't know whether the boxes are inches or centimeters or whatever, so we use units for that. So we're saying that AC is equal to seven units. The extension in question asks, what is the length of line segment AM? It should make sense to you that since we counted seven boxes from A to C, that from A to M would be half of that distance because, of course, M is the middle or midpoint, which means the length of line segment AM should be half that length. So in other words, line segment AM is equal to 3.5 units. One thing that you should recognize is that I know that the entire length of this line segment is seven units. And I should also be able to identify that the length from C to M and the length from M to A is equal to 3.5 units respectively. Using this information, we should be able to intuit that this piece 3.5 plus this piece 3.5 is equal to the entire length, which is seven units. If you understand this concept, you're already well on your way to understanding the ideas behind the addition postulate. First, let's talk about bisectors. This is another piece of vocabulary that you need for geometry. Remember, we're learning a lot of vocabulary this year. Let's talk first about a line segment bisector, also known as the midpoint. Uh, so the segment bisector definition is a line which cuts another line segment into two equal parts at the midpoint. So the definition is here and the diagram looks like this. And you can see I drew this red line in here. This red line is the segment bisector. It cuts this line segment AB into two equal parts. In geometry, when we want to identify that two uh, segments are equivalent or they are congruent, as we learned in a previous video, then we use these little hash marks or tick marks to indicate that they're the exact same measure as each other. We could also use multiple different tick marks to represent the fact that the segments are different. You'll see that a little bit later. But for this case, we're uh, running this segment bisector, this line, through the line segment at the line segment's midpoint. And just being clear here, that point is the midpoint. Next, we're going to talk about angle bisectors. And an angle bisector is just a line that cuts an angle into two equal parts through the vertex. Similar to a segment bisector, it's going to split a diagram into two equal parts. However, this is going to uh, split the angle into two equal measures, uh, not going through a line, but going through a vertex. I'll show you what I mean. And you can see here that we've drawn a line that cuts the angle into two equal parts. We show that two line segments are equal measures or congruent uh, by using these hash marks. We can show that two angles are congruent by using these arc marks. So one arc for this angle, one arc for this angle. That just represents the fact that these two angles are congruent or equal. Um, so this line, which cuts the angle into two equal pieces, is called an angle bisector. This line that cuts the segment into equal pieces is a segment bisector. So you should intuit that bisector means something that cuts a structure or a figure in half into two equal pieces. Moving on to the actual addition or subtraction postulate, let's take that information that we just learned about and try to apply it to uh, a, a postulate. Now, the whole idea behind the addition and subtraction postulates is this. The whole is equal to the sum of its parts. So if I'm looking at this first diagram, I see angle MRW. That's the large diagram there, the large angle from M to R and then from R to W. And you can see that this angle is made up of two separate smaller angles. It's made up of MRK, and it's also made up of KRW. 
it should make sense to you that if I take the measure of MRK and the measure of KRW and add those two things together, they should be equal to the measure of MRW, the entire thing. In other words, the sum of the two parts is equal to the whole. Taking a look at this algebraically, the whole, or in other words, the large angle MRW, which is in yellow here, is equal to the sum of its parts. The first part is MRK, which is outlined in green, and the second part is KRW, which is outlined in blue. It should make sense to you that this green piece plus this blue piece is equal to the yellow piece. So we can use that to manufacture or create an actual definition for addition postulate when it refers to angles. So two different ways to summarize this. The measure of an angle is equal to the sum of the measures of its parts, or the measure of the larger angle, you can see this yellow angle here, is equal to the sum of the measures of the smaller angles, these two green and blue angles respectively. So basically the idea is the whole is equal to the sum of its parts. We can also apply this not just to angles, but to line segments. In this example, we see line segment AC, which is all the way from A to C. And you can see that line segment AC is comprised of, it's made up of two different smaller line segments. Line segment AB from here to here, and also line segment BC, which is from here to here. In other words, what I can say is, uh, based on the addition postulate, the sum of AB and BC is going to be equal to the measure of AC. Here's how that looks algebraically. So I could say that the entire line segment AC is equal to the sum of the first piece of the line segment, in this case it's the smaller piece, plus the second piece of the line segment, which is in this case the large piece. Doesn't matter which one is smaller or larger though, all it matters is what the parts are and the whole is. So the whole, AC, is equal to the sum of its parts. Here's how it looks when you write it out as a postulate. So for a segment addition postulate, we can say that the measure of a segment is equal to the sum of the measures of its parts. We could also say that the measure of the larger segment is equal to the sum of the measures of the smaller segments which make it up. There's one caveat though, in order for this to work, A, B, and C, or all three of the points that are considered um, in the situation, have to be collinear. As long as this condition is satisfied of that the points are collinear, then we're able to use the segment addition postulate very easily. Let's take a look at a couple of model examples. In this example, we can see that we're given the measure of ABC, which is 94. It looks to me like we're given the measure of this entire angle. It's almost a right angle, it's just maybe a little bit bigger than a right angle. If we're asked to find the measure of angle CBD, that means we're going to have to use some relationship that's going on inside of this diagram. And I want you to notice that when I'm looking at this diagram, I have two pieces, uh, angle ABD and also angle DBC. And these two smaller angles make up this larger angle, ABC. So the relationship here is that ABC is made up of the sum of its parts. So let's write that out in an equation. So the basic form of the angle addition postulate is that uh, two angles, or could be more angles, add together to a larger angle. And in this case, I have a larger angle, which is ABC, which I'm going to substitute in here. And then ABD and DBC are going to go here and here, respectively. Here you can see I've substituted in the values, um, or I'm sorry, I've substituted in the uh, notation. Now I'm going to do the values. Now I've substituted these in with parentheses because that's generally what you do when you substitute. However, since this is an addition problem, I don't need those parentheses. I'll break these two polynomials out of the parentheses and just combine like terms. And once I do that, it's basically just an algebra problem which gives us x is equal to 18. Remember that it is asking us for the measure of angle CBD. So what I'm going to do is take this information, which is x is equal to 18, and substitute it into the measure of angle CBD. Angle CBD is, of course, right here. It's x plus 7. Substituting and solving, or I'm sorry, substituting and simplifying, I should say, I get the measure of angle CBD is 25. Or in other words, CBD measures 25 degrees. Not too bad. In the second model example, it gives us that J as a point is between H and K. In other words, H and K are the end points of this uh, segment, and J is the point that's in the middle. It asks us to use segment addition postulate to solve for X, then find the length of each segment, given these pieces of information. So we're asked to find the length of each segment, and we're given a couple of measures here. In order to envision this problem, the first thing I'm going to do is draw a diagram, keeping in mind that the diagram should have H and K on the outside and J in the middle or maybe not in the middle, maybe just somewhere in between. 
So here's my diagram. It says that H and K are the endpoints, as I said previously, and J is a point that's somewhere between them. Now I'm going to label this diagram with the information that I know. So if you look at this intuitively, you should be able to see that H to J plus J to K should be equal to all the way from H to K. Uh, I'm going to use segment addition postulate to model that. All I'm doing is turning that intuition that you had into an algebra sentence, uh, in other words, an equation. So the first part is what I already know, that the two smaller parts added together should be equal to the larger uh, piece, or in other words, part plus part is equal to whole. Now what I'm going to do is substitute the information that I know into this equation so that I can actually solve it. And here you can see I color-coded it a little bit, so you can see 2x plus 4 is from here, the 3x plus 3 is from here, and then the 22 is that total, that hk, which they wrote as kh, but as you remember, uh, a, a line segment can be written either way. Uh, it doesn't change the value. Now I'm going to do some good old-fashioned algebra, combining like terms and solving. You can see I finished my algebra here. I found that x was equal to 3. Now that I know this piece of information, I'm going to use it to uh, actually answer the question to find the length of each segment. I'm asked to find the lengths of all three of these segments. Turns out I already have one of the measures, kh is equal to 22. I'm just going to substitute my x value, which is 3, into both of these expressions to find the values of those line segments. So here I substituted x is equal to 3 to get hj is 10. And then here I substituted x equals 3 again to get jk is equal to 12 as a quick check. 10 plus 12 is 22, and I know that KH is 22, so I must have done something right. All right, this was a video about uh, addition and subtraction postulate. Keep in mind that the idea behind this is simply taking the two smaller parts, or however many smaller parts there are, combining them together, and then coming up with a, um, a whole. Hopefully this made sense to you. Good luck studying.